Hey everybody, today I'd like to go over another common Linux privilege escalation method that can occur when non-privileged users are able to write into root's path. Now let's start out by explaining what the environmental path variable is. So if we type in env to get the environment and prep for path, we're going to go ahead and see the path environment variable. Now anytime you try to run a command such as ls, so we go ahead and run ls, what that's going to do is search for an executable file along this path, and it always traverses from left to right. So if we go ahead and type which ls, we can see that the ls executable binary is stored in the bin directory. Notice that bin is all the way down here. So in order to find this binary, it's going to have to search through all these different directories here before it finally finds out the ls binary in bin. Now this can be exploited as a privilege escalation method if a non-standard user has write access to anything in this path that comes before where this binary is intended to be found. So if we're able to write to the bin directory or any directory before bin and substitute in some binary for ls, then anytime root would go to execute this command, it would run a binary that a non-privileged user put there as root. Now this could be some sort of reverse shell and could potentially cause problems on the system. So for this example, I've set up a cron job on the machine. And if we take a look at the cron tab, we can see that there's a cron job here that runs every minute on the minute, which is going to cat uh, just some uh, test file in the temp directory. Now, if we go ahead and look at which cat we're actually using, we're using cat in the bin directory. So if we go back and look at our path again, remember bin is further down here on the list. So if we're able to, you know, write to any directory before bin or in bin itself, we could potentially make that cron job run a binary that's not actually cat. So I'm going to pop over here to a shell and just say a, a normal user and see if we can go ahead and write to any of those directories. So I'm going to start out by running touch, which just creates a zero byte file. Uh, basically, it's really good for testing if you have write permission in a directory. And we'll go ahead and start off with bin, because that's where the cat binary is. So we're able to touch files in bin, which means that we have write access there. Uh, that, so we can go ahead and move the cat binary out of bin. So we'll move slash bin uh, slash cat. And we're just going to go ahead and put that in the temp directory. Now, if we go ahead and make a new file in bin and call it cat, anytime that cron job runs, it's going to go ahead and run this new executable file instead of the real cat binary. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. We'll go ahead and make this a bash script. And we just want this to send a reverse shell to localhost since we're just on one machine right now for demonstration purposes. So we'll do ncat localhost uh, port 444, and we want to send a bash environment. One thing to keep in mind is that binaries on the path are only executed if they have the execute permission. So we should go ahead and put execute on slash bin slash cat, which is our new file. So now if we go ahead and listen on port 444, Every time that cron job runs on the minute, we should get a reverse shell. So we'll do sudo uh, netcat-lvp on port 444. All right, and now that some time has passed, we can see that we just got a connection from localhost received. And if we do who am I, we are root. And so to recap, we, what we did is we looked at root's environmental path we saw that there is a cron job running the cat binary, which is located in the bin directory. As a non-privileged user, we had access to write to the bin directory, so we were able to replace that cat binary with a binary of our own. So every time the cron job was run, it was actually running the binary that we put into place instead of the real cat command. Now keep in mind that this can be done for any different binary. It doesn't specifically have to be cat. And if you're able to write on directories that come before the, the directory of the actual binary in the path, then you'll have the same result. You don't have to be able to write to this exact 
uh, directory for the binary is located as long as it comes before it on the path. 